Hi guys, how's it going? So today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I think it's important to study backend development, even if you're studying to be a front-end developer. So I basically think that whatever you're doing, whether it be web development or development in general, um, even if you're focusing on the client or the user interface or the user experience, I still think it's a really important skill or it's a really important thing to learn uh, about how the back end works, how servers work, how data gets to the front end. Because at my bootcamp, alongside studying HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and AngularJS, we also studied Node.js, which I found to be a lot of fun. And we also studied SQL and MySQL and a bit of PHP as well. But I'm really glad that during that course I learned even if it was like more basic concepts, but I learned the logic behind how a server works and what a backend does. And so far, to be honest, in my career, it's actually come in really useful. Um, in my first job as a web developer, I was only doing client side, but all the data that I was working with was coming from the backend. It was coming from the server team. And in conversations and in you know bug reports and fixing uh, issues, it was really important to be able to go to them and talk to them in their language, let's say, about what was going wrong and what I needed to get from them, whether it be JSON or um, opening a WebSocket. So it was really important to have that knowledge of being able to just speak the language and know what they were talking about back to me. And then my current role, I'm kind of acting more as a full stack developer. Um, obviously I'm focusing mainly on the client side, but there is times where the backend team aren't available and you need to jump into the server code and you need to write new functions and you need to write new commands and write new operations for the server on your own projects. So that's kind of why my knowledge of the backend and knowledge of backend programming has really shot up in the last few months because I'm kind of forced into doing it at work anyway. So obviously don't jump in if you're just starting out, if you're just learning web development, if you're focusing on the front end, don't confuse yourself and jump in straight away to doing the back end as well and learning everything at once. But I think if you take it slowly and break it down into small steps, this is kind of my recommendation for you if you want to get into backend development. Firstly, you should be looking at what a server is. What does a server do? Uh, on the most basic level, it gets a request from the client and it sends back an HTML file, CSS file, a JavaScript file, which is displayed on the browser to the client. Obviously, nowadays, servers do so much more than that, but that's what a server does on a very basic level. So a little tip, whenever you're on a web page, if you open the dev console in Chrome, whenever you click on a link, make a request, open a page, click on the network tab, and you'll see all the time there are just requests going out and coming back with data. That is what the server is doing. So when you go to google.com, for example, you type in a search, Watch those requests going out and watch what comes back in and how it's displayed on the page. So leading on from that, you should also then start to think about kind of what a server can do. Look into what a server can actually do. Um, I think it's used for mainly the direction and routing of data, but you can use it to also organize that data. You can use it to analyze that data. You can use it to scrape other web pages to get more data for your apps or your web pages that you're working on. You can use server-side technologies to call APIs uh, to get bulk bits of data from other companies and other sources. So you can really do a lot with a server. And when it comes to languages that you can use on the server side, you can look at Node.js, which is written in JavaScript. You can look at PHP. You can look at Java. It's a bit more of a heavy high-end language, but it's still used for writing servers. And you can also use Python. There's also the logic side of servers. You know, a server isn't just a computer sitting somewhere else giving you data. You also need to know about databases and how the data that the server is working with is stored. So you can store your data in databases and like NoSQL databases like MongoDB. You can also use databases like MySQL, which stores them in relational tables. And again, each one of these database languages has their own sort of queries. So you can use Mongoose to query MongoDB databases. You can use SQL to query MySQL databases. And then when it comes to actually working with a database, you should know the basic principles of create, read, update, and delete, or CRUD. So creating, for example, can be adding new accounts, adding new data to the database, adding new users. Reading can be getting data from the database, putting it back to the client, and then you as if you're a front-end developer, showing that to the user. Updating can be anytime data is changed, so the user might go into their profile, and they might create their profile, 
read their profile, and then they want to change their name on their profile, and that's updated back into the database via the server. And you also have the D, which is the delete function part of a CRUD. So you basically say, this is the data on the front end I don't need, let's go ahead and just get rid of it from the database. You don't always need to delete it, you can also make another table in your database and put that deleted data over there. So you don't really ever have to actually delete anything. Depending on size and what you're actually doing with your data, if you need it in the future, you don't ever have to really delete it. So all the things I've just said, I've linked in the description down below. If you want to have a little read through, I've included some links there to other places. If you want to get started with learning about the backend and learning about servers and databases, if you are going down that route before learning front end, well done, good luck. Um, that's a really cool thing to do, to not go after sort of the fancy, easier, in my opinion, uh, thing to pick up, so good luck with that. But obviously, if you're just starting out learning, if you're just in the beginning of your career, don't be a jack of all trades. I think get really good at the front end, if that's what you're trying to focus on, and get really good at that, and then learn the back end. Same as if you're starting out and you wanna be a back end engineer, get really good at that before you even start tackling the front end. I think this is where a lot of new developers kind of trip up. They try and do too much at once, they try and learn too much at once. It all becomes an information overload and they just get disillusioned and they quit or they take a hit in their studying. So again, just take it slow. If you're learning front end, put all your time and effort into learning HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Don't even concentrate on a framework, just get those things down. Get your first job build some projects, get into the industry, and then you'll see, you'll start learning yourself. And it's also a tip, the more, especially you learn JavaScript, the more you'll understand as your career goes along how the backend works just naturally. You'll understand if you're working with JSON data, if you're working with any data, displaying it to a user, your knowledge and your understanding of the backend will just come along naturally, but just have fun with it, enjoy it and good luck again thanks a lot for watching this video about back end um, if you have any comments or suggestions any ways that you've learned or that you'd like to recommend to anybody else leave me a comment down below um, i'd love to follow up and see if anyone else is being a back end developer first good luck let me know how it's going and uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you around next time